The year was 1975 at the Lummi Native American Reservation in Washington. The following has been put together by myself from two different articles, courtesy of the Library of the Bay Area Group, Warren Thompson, and the files of Rene de Hinden, chronicling the sightings from the perspective of Sergeant Ken Cooper, a tribal police officer for the Lummi Native American Reservation, via telephone interview. The tiny federal government-operated police force had been swamped with reports of Sasquatch-like creatures. Most of the sightings had been between roads about four miles apart in the vicinity of old abandoned apple and pear orchards. Maybe he or they are just hungry, Cooper mused. But Friday, October 10th, was the first time he saw a Sasquatch for himself as it ran off into the bushes. Not much more is known about that encounter. The Indians don't want the police to bother it or them, he said. They get mad when they think we're bothering it or hunting it. We're not. When we get called, we go out and look, and if it comes into their yards, they yell for us. They're our biggest critics until it happens to them, then it's a different story. Just such a call took place on Friday, October 24th, exactly two weeks after Cooper's first sighting. At 2.20 a.m., Cooper responded to a call about something tearing into a home owned by 78-year-old Emma Smith, who had fled out of terror. It had come around the back of the house, where a window had been ripped out. When Cooper arrived, about seven people were there and had their car spotlights on, a being about seven and a half feet tall. It was nothing like I've ever seen before. He said the being was covered with black hair and was very muscular. It was steaming as if it had been running. It had upturned nostrils and had almost no neck. He added that the being looked very different from his relative's description of the Sasquatch. When the Sasquatch was sighted, it hunched down in the bushes, but did not run away. The creature went into a crouch, and when I got within 35 feet, it lowered itself until just its head was showing. It looked like it was studying us. Several people examined the Sasquatch with two spotlights for a long time. He leveled his 12-gauge shotgun at it, and then thinking it might be someone in a gorilla suit, he yelled, If there's somebody just fooling around, you better knock it off because we have weapons. For 20 minutes, I leveled my gun at it, but didn't shoot. He said because of a Bureau of Indian Affairs official had told him there was a new law that shooting a Sasquatch would be considered manslaughter. He said so many people were chasing the Sasquatch with guns that the Lummi Tribe Council voted to outlaw shooting the creature. Cooper said he was not determined to shoot at it if that were true. When asked if he was scared of the Sasquatch, Cooper said no. I had a sawed-off shotgun with me. Then there were noises in the heavy brush on his right and left, and people said they saw other Bigfoots. Then we just backed off and left. After the sighting, Sergeant Cooper checked an encyclopedia and found that the Sasquatch had appeared to resemble an orangutan, except in size and color. At daylight, he returned and measured the footprints in the frosty ground, which came to be 18 inches long and 7 inches wide, according to him. He next saw the creature four days later on Tuesday, October 28th, at about 11 p.m., 70 yards ahead of his patrol car, which he raced towards it. It ran across the field, bumped into two sleeping horses, spun around, and raced into the woods. Four days later, on Saturday, November 1st, Cooper was followed by something emitting a powerful high-pitched yell alongside his car, which was moving 10 miles an hour. Using a dictaphone, which is used to record speech for later transcription, Cooper recorded 20 seconds of a high-pitched Sasquatch's yell. Dennis Newman reporting from Little Eagle, South Dakota. Across the mountains on the Pacific coast in Washington state, veteran hunter and Rockingham County police officer Kenny Cooper was driving along this road when he heard a weird noise. I was coming down north on this road here and I heard some noise screaming back in here. And all the time I was going along, he was screaming. And everybody in Rockingham County could hear it because I did have the police mic outside so uh, they were listening to whatever it was that I was hearing. And the noise that was coming from that creature is what was on the recorder here. took that recording, we sent it into the lab to have it analyzed and it came back that there's no metallic noises in the recording indicating that it wasn't made by some kind of a machine. And they said there's no voice 
Uh, no human has vocal cords enough to throw the high pitches and low pitches at the same time that was coming from them. Ken called his brother Lee Cooper, who was also a tribal police officer, on the radio while the Sasquatch was yelling. Cooper said that the creatures make several different noises including whistles, hollers, screams, and noises like a bird. According to Cooper, the sounds were heard all over Whatcom County. Sightings like these are not unheard of as, according to Cooper, one person reported driving along a road when a Bigfoot appeared, raced along the car at 40 miles an hour for about 170 yards, and then leapt into the bushes. According to a telephone interview with Lee Cooper on Tuesday, November 11th, he used the recording two days later to attract a Sasquatch to a garbage dump where it had been sighted earlier. According to Ken Cooper, he played it for about 15 men out near a dump when a Bigfoot came running out of the trees, answering the screaming. Ken said he could not see what the Sasquatch looked like except that it was six feet tall and its eyes shone in the spotlight. He also stated that it kind of walked like an ape. One of the guys took a shot at it and it ran back into the trees. I do not think that Cooper was lying in these interviews. He's an officer. Not that they're incapable of lying, but if seven other people saw the creature as well, they probably would have come forward if Cooper were lying, considering that they were swamped with reports. Officers are professionally trained to observe a situation as analytically as possible. This is coming from someone whose father was a police officer. And the noise that was coming from that creature is what was on the recorder here. We took that recording, we sent it into the lab to have it analyzed and it came back that there's no metallic noises in the recording anything that wasn't made by some kind of a machine and they said there's no voice uh, no human has vocal cords enough to throw the high pitches and low pitches at the same time that was coming from them so I'd like to thank everyone uh, that subscribed to me I realized I know I'm not um, cranking out as many videos as I can I've been really busy with um, a bunch of other projects right now, um, like managing our Facebook page and writing our book that me and Crash Course Cryptozoology are working on. Crash Course and I are both administrators on a uh, Facebook group called the Association of Cryptozoological Fieldwork and Analysis. Um, so if you're interested in fieldwork and reports like that, um, I would definitely go and go check out our page. Um, we're also working on a book called Crypt Hoax Zoology that will be coming out later this year. And it's about uh, the great hoaxes in cryptozoology. And I'm doing the art for it as well as some of the writing. If you follow our group, you'll have updates on when the book's coming out and stuff like that. And of course, we'll probably give updates on both of our channels too. So I'll link, I'll link everything in the description. Um, but it definitely means a lot that everyone is still watching my videos. And it seems to enjoy them. It really... Um, kind of gets me motivated to uh, make more videos and hope, hopefully I'll be able to make some more um, in the future um, hopefully sooner than this one came out <laughs> and, um, but yeah if you like this video uh, definitely subscribe uh, like the video share it um, you can share these anywhere you want I really don't care <laughs> um, if you have any more information about this case I would definitely love to hear about it um, I might even do an update video of Anything new comes out, but I'm pretty sure I covered um, most, mostly everything about this case. Um, but thank you so much for watching.